okay? When you have defective formation, there's three issues. One, is it a de jure for a corporation? Number two, is it de facto? If it's neither, number three, can we use corporation by estoppel? Now think estoppel in terms of contract law to prevent somebody from what denying what they are, okay? Now, the language that we use for de jure or de jure corporation, the language we use is called substantial compliance, okay? Take a look at the bolded term on page three. It says full compliance meets the formalities, substantial compliance is sufficient. A de jure corporation arises when there's been a substantial compliance with all of the mandatory conditions preceding to incorporation. It means you pretty well are a corporation for all purposes. And the rationale is if there was a minor screw up, okay, let's say for example, you filed the articles and what you did is you spelled the name of the corporation incorrectly. All right, so technically what? You're not a valid corporation. You are under corporate law. Because what they say is if you substantially complied with all corporate formalities, misspelling the name is not going to be grounds to disregard the corporate entity. So if you're a creditor and you're saying, oh, they misspelled their name and therefore they're not a valid corporation, that's wrong. That doesn't work that way. Because this is called an equity defense. If, if you hold yourself out as a corporation, and you have shareholders, et cetera, just because you misname, you misspell the name when you file the articles is not going to mean we don't have limited liability. The court's going to say equity says you met well, you substantially complied, and therefore it's a valid defense to a creditor coming in and going after the shareholders. It doesn't work that way. You are a corporation for all intents and purposes. Now, the only person who can attack a de jure corporation would be anybody, and that would be nobody, because a rule says de jure status cannot be attacked by anyone and it's conclusive as to the entire world. So it is a valid corporation for all purposes. Now, that's a little easy, so I say testable issue. When a court becomes insolvent, creditors may attempt to hold shareholders, officers, and directors liable if it can be found there was a defect. Well, they may try to assume, but what's the defense on the exam? The defense is gonna be, we are a what? We are a de jure corporation, and therefore we have a valid defense. We are not liable. Now, the second issue you have on page number three is called a de facto corporation. Notice the language changes. It's bolded for you on page three. It's called colorable compliance. It's called colorable compliance. And what that means is, is you can do something a little worse, a little bit more negligent, and the court will still protect you. Okay, so what's an example of de facto? It would be highlight 2A, colorable compliance, a failure to have the articles accepted by the Secretary of State, but a good faith attempt to follow the articles is sufficient. Failure to have the signatures notarized, attorney fails to follow the articles. Now this is highlight that because that's what you're going to get on the exam. So let's say that Mark and I decide that we're going to incorporate our business. Okay, we're going to call it Mark Co. And we hire an attorney to go out and file the articles with the Secretary of State and the attorney negligently fails to file the articles on time. But Mark and I don't know that. We go out and act for a corporation, we act in good faith, we have no knowledge. If we're sued by a creditor, they're arguing, oh, this is not a corporation, it's de facto, guess what, we have a defense. The defense applies here as well, because the rule is that if the corporation was not formed, but it was in a negligent manner, wasn't excessive, wasn't extreme, that the incorporators didn't have any knowledge, okay, Mark and I had no knowledge that our attorney failed to file the articles on time, then we're protected. We are a corporation. And that means creditors cannot come in and hold us individually liable. So these are equity defenses, fairness, to protect shareholders when there's been a minor screw up. 